everybody, welcome to Chris's Daily Read Aloud. Today we are reading The Emperor's New Clothes by Hans Christian Andersen, illustrated by Virginia Lee Burton. So this is a folk tale or a fairy tale from Denmark. Some of you may recognize it. It is one of my favorites from when I was a kid. Many years ago, there lived an emperor. He was so fond of new clothes that he spent all his time and all his money in order to be well-dressed. He did not care about his soldiers, nor did he go to the theater, or even ride out except to show off his beautiful new clothes. He had a different suit for every hour of the day. That's a lot of clothes. Look at all those clothes. People would ask, where is the emperor? Instead of answering, he's in council with his ministers. His officers would reply, the emperor is changing his clothes in his dressing room. Look at all those clothes he has. Time passed merrily in the big town, which was the emperor's capital city. Visitors arrived every day at court, and one day there came two men who called themselves weavers, but they were in fact clever robbers. They pretended that they knew how to weave cloth of the most beautiful colors and magnificent patterns. Moreover, they said, the clothes woven from this magic cloth could not be seen by anyone who was unfit for the office he held, or who was very stupid. The beautiful clothes could only be seen by those who were fit for the offices they held, or who were very clever. So you had to be clever, you had to be smart to see their clothes. Does that sound real? These indeed must be splendid clothes, thought the emperor. If I had a suit made of this magic cloth, I could find out at once what men in my kingdom were not good enough for the positions they hold, and I should be able to tell who are wise and who are foolish. This stuff must be woven for me immediately. And he ordered large sums of money to be given to both weavers in, the, in order that they might begin their work at once. So the two men who pretended to be weavers set up two looms and went on as though they were working very busily, though in reality they did nothing at all. They asked for the most delicate silk and the purest gold thread. This they kept for themselves and put quietly into their knapsacks and then went on with their pretend work at the empty looms until far into the night. There they are weaving, but there's nothing on their looms. After some little time had passed, the emperor said to himself, I should like to know how the weavers are getting along with my cloth. I'm a little bit worried about going, to, going myself to look at the cloth, because they said that a fool or a man unfit for his office would be unable to see the material. I'm sure that I am quite safe, but all the same, I think it best to send someone first. All, through this, all the people throughout the city had already heard of the wonderful cloth and its magic, and were all anxious to learn how wise or stupid their friends and neighbors might be. I'll send my faithful old minister to see how the weavers are getting on with my cloth, said the emperor at last, and after some thought, he will be the best possible person to see how the cloth looks, for he is a man of sense, and no one can be more suitable for his office than he is. So the king's a little bit afraid he might not be able to see that cloth. So the honest old minister went into the hall, where the wicked men were working with all their might at the empty looms. What can be the meaning of this, thought the old man, opening his eyes very wide. I cannot see the least bit of thread on the looms, nor the least bit of cloth woven. However, he did not speak his thoughts aloud. The men who were pretending to weave asked him very politely to be so good as to come nearer, and then pointing to the empty looms, asked him where, whether the design pleased him, and whether the colors were not very beautiful. What do you think? Are those colors beautiful? The poor old minister looked and looked, but he could not see anything on the looms, for the very good reason that there was nothing there. But of course he did not know this, and thought only that he must be a foolish man or unfit for the office of minister. Dear me, he said to himself, I must never tell anyone that I could not see the cloth. Well, sir minister, said one of the weavers, still pretending to work, you do not say whether or not the stuff pleases you. Oh, it is most beautiful, said the minister quickly peering at the loom through his spectacles. This pattern and the colors, yes, I will tell the emperor without delay how very wonderful I think them. There's nothing there. We shall be most grateful to you, said the pretended weavers, Then they, and they named the different colors. 
The old minister listened closely to their fine words so that he could repeat them to the emperor. And then the wicked men asked for more silk and gold, saying they needed, needed it to finish what they had begun. Again, they were given costly thread and silk, and again they put it all into their knapsacks and went on pretending to work as busily as before. The emperor was pleased with the report brought by his minister, and soon after sent another officer of his court to see how the men were getting on and to find out how soon the cloth would be ready. It was, of course, just the same with the officer as it had been with the minister. He looked at all the looms on all sides, but he could not see he could see nothing at all but the empty frames. Does not the stuff appear as beautiful to you as it did to my lord the minister? asked the men, at the same time pointing to the empty looms and talking of the design and colors that were there that were not there. I certainly am not stupid, thought the officer. It must be that I am not fit for the very good, comfortable office that I have. That is very odd indeed. However, no one shall ever know anything about it. And at once he turned to the knaves and praised the material he could not see, saying he was delighted with both colors and patterns. Then he then returned to the emperor and said, Indeed, please your imperial majesty, the cloth, ah, the cloth which the weavers are making is extraordinarily magnificent. The whole city was talking about the splendid cloth which the emperor had ordered to be woven at such great cost. And now at last the emperor wished to go himself and see the marvelous cloth while it was still on the loom. He took with him a few of the officers of the court, among whom were the officer and the minister who had already seen the cloth and come back with the tales of its beauty. As soon as the pretended weavers heard the emperor coming, they worked harder than ever though they still did not weave a single thread through the empty looms. Is this not the cloth is not the cloth magnificent, said the officer and the minister who had already seen the weavers pretend work. If your magister will only be so good as to look at it. What a splendid design, what glorious colours and at the same time they pointed at the empty frames because they thought that everyone else could see the wonderful work of the weavers, even if they could not see it themselves. How is this? said the Emperor to himself. I can see nothing. This is indeed terrible. I am I stupid? Or am I unfit to be Emperor? That would be the worst thing that could happen. Oh, the cloth is beautiful, he cried aloud. I am delighted with it, and he smiled most charmingly, for on no account would he say that he could not see what his officer and minister had praised so much. All his followers now strained their eyes, hoping to see something in the looms, but they could see no more than the others. Nonetheless, they all exclaimed, Oh, how beautiful! And advised his majesty the emperor to have some new clothes made from this splendid material and to wear them in the great procession, procession that was soon to take place. Magnificent! Charming! Excellent! were said over and over and over again, and everyone was very happy indeed. The emperor pretended to share in the pleasure of his followers and presented the two rogues, those are the two thieves that are doing this, with the title of gentlemen weavers and the ribbon of an order of knighthood to be worn in their buttonholes. He made them knights. The wicked men sat up all night before the day on which the procession was to take place. They had sixteen lights burning so that everyone might see how eager they were to finish the emperor's new clothes. They pretended to roll the cloth off their looms. They cut the air with their scissors and sewed with needles without any thread in them. See, they cried at last, the emperor's new suit is ready. And now the emperor and all his court came to see the weaver's work. And the rogues raised their arms as though they were holding up something to be seen and said, Here are your majesty's, maj majesty's trousers. Here is the scarf. Here is the coat. And the whole suit is light as a cobweb. When dressed... Oh, there we go. There's the suit. Do you see it? Me neither. When dressed in it, one might fancy that one has nothing on at all. It's going to feel like you have nothing on at all. That, however, is the wonderful thing about this delicate magic cloth. Yes, indeed, said all the court, although they could not, not one of them could see a thing at all. They don't see anything. But they keep saying they do, because they think they need to. If your imperial majesty would be gracious, would be graciously pleased to take off your clothes, we will fit on the new suit and the undergarments in front of the mirror. 
The emperor was then undressed, and the rogues pretended to dress him in his new clothes, the emperor turning around from side to side in front of the mirror. How splendid his majesty looks in his new clothes, and how well they fit, everyone cried. What a design, what colors! They are indeed royal robes. Is he wearing anything? The canopy which is to be carried over your majesty in the procession is waiting, now, said the chief master of ceremonies. I am quite ready, answered the emperor. Do my clothes fit well, he asked, turning himself again, around again in front of the mirror in order that he might look as though he were admiring his handsome suit. The lords of the bedchamber, who were to carry his majesty's train, fell about on the ground as if they were lifting up the ends. The train is the um, cape that goes behind him and carries on the ground. Oh, and then pretended to be carrying something. They lifted up the end and carried it. They could never for a moment let anyone think that they were stupid or unfit for their office. So now the emperor walked under his high canopy in the middle of the procession, right through the streets of his capital city, and all the people standing by and up, by and those at the windows cried out, Oh, how beautiful are our, new em our emperor's new clothes! What a magnificent train! And how gracefully the scarf hangs! In fact... No one would admit that he could not see these clothes, which everyone seemed to think so beautiful, for he would be called a simpleton or unfit for his office. People think they're going to be called dumb because they say that the emperor doesn't have clothes on. Never before had any of the emperor's clothes caused so much excitement as these. But the emperor has nothing on at all, said a little child. There's the emperor with nothing. The child tells the truth, said the father. And so it was that what the child said was whispered from one to another until all knew and they cried out all together, but he has nothing on at all. The emperor looked, felt very silly for he knew that the people were right, but he thought the procession has started and it must go on now. So the lords of the bedchamber held their heads higher than ever and took greater trouble to pretend to hold up the train which wasn't there at all. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. It is a fun one about not doing something just because someone else tells you or not believing everything people tell you. Okay, Use your common sense and think about it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe, wash your hands, and have fun, everybody. Bye.